There are two devices that are used to measure uh, resistance, a micro-ohmmeter and a insulation tester or megometer. These are often confused because they are both measuring uh, resistance. In the case of the micro-ohmmeter, which we're going to cover today, we are effectively on the right-hand side of the decimal point. Now here we see the decimal point, and as we get more and more sensitivity, lower and lower resistance, we see the engineering units change from centi, milli, all the way down to micro, which is five decimal places. In contrast, with an insulation tester where we want to measure very high resistance insulation capabilities, we find ourselves going more and more on the uphill side of the decimal point, if you will, and getting into megometers, for example, which is quite common. The AEMC Model 6250 microohmmeter is unique in that it can measure out to 0 0.1 microohm. That is extremely sensitive and probably perhaps the, uh, the best in the industry. It can measure up to 2,500 ohms, so it does have a broad range, although normally it will be measuring uh, down into the very low ohm resistance. It has test current capability because when we're testing a junction or bond, we want to pass current through that bond to stress the connection, if you will. One can walk up to two whisker uh, 20 gauge wires touching and measure with a classic ohm meter and you'll read zero ohms. That is not a good connection. It will not support any kind of current and in the case of lightning protection, things like that, you want something with an excellent bonding capability, very low resistance to carry away a lot of energy. That is why we have test currents available from 1 milliamp clear up to 10 amps. We're going to stress this bonding connection where two particular pieces of metal are touching, be it welded or be it a cinch down or torque down uh, lug and a bus bar, for example, in the case of power wiring. Okay. It has several additional features that are unique to this product. It has a sensor input capability for a thermistor bead to measure ambient temperature. Because we know that as temperature rises, increase in uh, resistance will also occur. So if we're really wanting a very true reading, we must take the temperature into consideration. Because for every 10 degree rise, C, rise of temperature, we will see the resistance will actually double. We also have a remote probe that can plug in here, come out and actually touch the test specimen. So we have a, a localized temperature input at that point. Okay. These are optional uh, RTDs. Uh, we have selectable metal types because different metals will exhibit different uh, resistance ranges, again, as a direct function of their temperature. We have four of the classic ones in here, for example, copper, steel, aluminum. However, if you do know the alpha, which is the engineering unit for resistance for that particular metal, you can actually dial that in this instrument. It has an automatic or manual temperature compensation. Uh, it has two alarm, uh, alarm programmable set points, where if it exceeds high or low uh, above a desired uh, resistance range, it will flag an alarm. It stores up to 1,500 test results. Now to keep these in neat order so we know where they are and what they are, they will actually increment. They will give us a label of object and a number and a test and a number. For example, if I was to test a three-phase transformer, I would call that transformer object number one and as I test it, a phase, that would be test one. B phase would be test two. C phase would be test three, for example. And I can store 1,500 sets of those readings. Okay. I have selectable inductive or resist pure resistance test because we know that when we do an inductive test, we have to keep the test signal present for a protracted period of time before the inductive reactant settles down and we get a true reading. If I do know it's a pure resistance, then I can uh, just activate the test. 
it will automatically activate the test and shut itself off and wait for the next test. This brings up another interesting feature. It can be set to automatically increment the test number to the next number. For example, if I have a lot of tests to do, I can be on object one, I can do test one. When I remove the leads and place them back on again, it will automatically increment to test two. Remove the leads, go to the next test point, uh, test specimen, it'll increment to test number three automatically. Uh, that is a unique feature also to this device. It has a large backlit display, and we can show that by turning it on, selecting any channel, and selecting the light to backlight it. Now, first we see the multiple scale selection, starting with 1 milliamp. We can increase it to 10 milliamps, 100 milliamps, 1 amp, and 10 amp, and again 10 amp. With each incremental step, not only are we increasing the, the current that's going to be driven through the test specimen, we also will be increasing the accuracy or the number of decimal places that will be displayed. Uh, we see that, uh, for example, uh, we have a warning buzzer. We can toggle that on and off to save the battery. Uh, if we had selected alarm, we would see that here. Uh, this will tell us what, what range we have selected, 250. So if I go to 100, we'll see that change to uh, 100. And I'm on the 25 ohm scale. Uh, it tells me the test current is now 100 milliamps. This tells us we are in the resistive mode, but I can toggle that back and forth into the inductive mode or I can go to the auto mode. Okay, This is where I'll be moving it from test to test. And we'll notice that we get more uh, decimal points the further up we go, the more sensitive we get. Okay, And it'll automatically change from ohms, in this case, to milliohms. So we'll get automatic uh, adjustment of the range. We'll notice that it is in standby so when I hook up to a test specimen and activate the test, you'll see it operate and go to standby. We'll start on the low scale, which allows us to only put one milliamp through this bonding connection. And it allows us to read very high range up until 2,500 amps, as high as 2,000. Well, we know it's going to be pretty low, but let's walk our way up and, and do a reading. First of all, it tells us we're on the ohm scale and we're only one-tenth of, uh, of an ohm range. Uh, now that tells us that uh, we are further on down scale, so we'll move it up with more sensitivity. We'll run a little more current through here, 10 milliamps, and try again. Aha, we're still reading all zeros, so it says that we have zero ohms resistance, very low. Let's crank up the uh, test signal to 100 milliamps. Now notice you get the operator and immediately it'll go back into uh, standby. Uh, we're still reading all zeros, so it says we're way low. Let's go up some more to more sensitivity. We'll pump some more current through it, and it just automatically changed into the uh, milliohm region. Okay, we'll do a test. And aha, now we're reading two tenths of a milliamp. Milliohm, rather, excuse me. And we'll crank it up some more. Now we're going to run 10 amps through it. We move the shift to decimal places and we find, no, it's not 0.2, it's actually 2.1. But we still have some further sensitivity we can test and we can run it up to 21, uh, excuse me, to 10 amps, but at 25 milliohm scale. So we just increase sensitivity by a magnitude of 10. Uh, we're still at the 21 and let's finally run 10 amps through it and read it. Aha, we are reading 0.2093 milliohms, which effectively is 209 microohms, and it's 209.3 microohms. So we see the sensitivity of this device as we increment up the scale, pump more current through, and increase uh, sensitivity. Now at any point in time, I can hit the MEM button and store that. And again, it will be object one, test two. My next test will increment to object 3, and so on. This instrument comes with a software package, which is the universal data view software that AEMC has that will 
operate across a broad spectrum of our test instruments. So now we'll conduct a new test. We'll move it to the 10 amp position and we will go ahead and test. This conductor is actually very good because it is 000, 000 0.4 micro ohms. Okay. So that just demonstrates the sensitivity of, uh, of this meter. The recording capability is unique. The fact that we can take temperature compensation in for very difficult and precise measurement is unique. The fact that I can see that the test take place is unique. The fact that I can make multiple tests and automatically reset and log and test each one of those is unique. So we see we have a lot of unique features that will help you perform your, your test, both accurately and with record and hard copy. We know with uh, ISO 9000, in many cases, we have to document our test. This will actually provide a documented list of our test. Okay, so that uh, concludes our test for the, uh, the micro-ohmmeter, the model.